Hey guys, thanks for joining me. I'm Adam with Boise Cascade in Riverside, California. Today I'm going to be talking about the Nangaris hardwood decking. Um, this is actually a Red Balao species. Um, Nangaris happens to be the brand name, which they've done a great job of getting out in the marketplace. So when contractors and customers come in, they're actually asking for uh, Nangaris. I want Nangaris. So, uh, the species, once again, is Red Balao. It's in the, Mah in the mahogany family. It comes out of Indonesia. Uh, it's all legally forested and chopped down. And so just like your uh, redwood and cedar forests, they have to have a harvest plan in order to chop down a, a lot of trees um, in order to uh, achieve that legally by the government. Um, what we're going to talk about, just real quick to get out of the way, you know, I've, I've got some questions in the past year or so as I've been digging into more of the hardwoods in general, uh, pinholes. Adam, I've you know done a couple of decks, I see some little pinholes in there, I'm a little concerned, is it an issue? And the, the truth is, uh, visually it might not look that great, but it does not infect or affect the structural integrity of the board whatsoever. The little pinholes, and if you come up here I'll show you kind of what we're talking about. Pinholes would be something like what you're seeing here, little teeny pinholes that can be what we call scattered pinholes across the board. Uh, what that is, is that in Indonesia, you know, they have bugs just like we do, and so that's a, a bug called the marine borer. And those little things can bore in there like out here, but in order to even get this stuff over to the United States, what Nangaris or what Tata, the exporter, does is they actually run it through a kiln, and basically that gets up to a boiling temperature, and it will kill anything whatsoever that could possibly be in the wood. And then it even has to go through a fumigation process. So really no concerns about that whatsoever. Uh, it's not talked about a whole lot. And honestly, it's seldom this gets brought up, but I figured I'd just address it in case there's any concerns about it. So let's talk about the good stuff. So the Mangaris product line is a very uh, dense and hardwood, not as hard as some of the uh, competitive hardwoods out there, but it is uh, durable. And that's what I meant when I said it's a hardwood. So that's why customers like to use it. It's going to last a long time. It's not going to get dinged up that easily. So um, anyways, that's kind of part of the benefits of the hardwoods. Um, what I'll get into real quick is we'll talk about the warranty on it. So uh, Mangaris is a brand, gives their product here, their lumber, a 20-year warranty against any damage or structural damage caused by termites, which basically is not going to happen. So. You know, that 20-year warranty is really just a peace of mind in general. We all like to get things that have a warranty on it. And the biggest deal here is that we have a direct relationship with the mill, with the exporter. So if there were an issue or a question, let's, you know, put issues aside. If there's questions or knowledge they want on the product, well, I can go or Boise can go. We can ask them directly and get you honest, straight answers uh, from the person, from the company that's exporting it directly to the mill, the people actually milling the product and using the log. So that's that's super important. Okay, so next what we're going to talk about is fire rating. So unfortunately we do get fires out here in Southern California. We all know it. It can be a little scary. Um, this product here has a Class A flame spread rating on the decking. So you're definitely covered on that in case an inspector uh, asked about that. So uh, it is on the WUI uh, website. So WUI approved Class A flame spread rating. Uh, next thing I'm going to talk about is uh, does Mangaris Red bleed red? Well, you know, unfortunately people kind of get mixed up in the name Mangaris Red, but it does bleed red. So let me address that. So that basically comes from the other Mangaris product that we used to distribute called Mangaris Diamond. At this time, we don't distribute it uh, uh, any longer. Uh, that did bleed red as part of the acclimation process, uh, even though that was called Mangaris Diamond. So Mangaris Red does not bleed red. You don't need to worry about that. So. I just wanted to uh, go ahead and address that and get that off the table. Um, now what we're going to talk about is the profiles. So if you come over here real quick, as you can see, you kind of have all the profiles laid out on this board to make it kind of clear on what components, what parts are available uh, for you in your main Garris projects. Um, you know, we have a 5 quarter by 12 fascia board right here. Um, you know, that could be, a, you could cut that for your stair risers, fascia around your deck. Uh, we have 1x8 and 1x4, which you could use that as, you know, horizontal fencing. That's a huge fad going on right now, which, you know, most customers use our 1x6 board for that. But you can definitely use that 1x8 and 1x4 and give it kind of a unique look and change it up and offer your customer something that maybe their neighbor did not do. Uh, we have a 2x8 
two by six available. Um, so any of your old decks, uh, redwood and cedar decks that are have joists on 24 inch centers, that's a perfect board to use for that. That way you get that same inch and a half thickness. So uh, two by six. Uh, your two by four <clears throat> typically used for you know a railing application for your bottom and top rail. Two by twos for balusters, and uh, your four by four. The nice thing about the four by fours and some of these components now, uh, in the past when we would get components in, the Indonesian government had a uh, top ten. It's actually not on this one here. They would have uh, these grooves kind of milled into it. And so now, at least last year, all the stuff that we got in no longer has those grooves. So the 4x4s and everything is a nice uh, S4S. So I just put some of that stuff on the table here to show you, but really it's all on this board, which I put kind of an oil on it so it pops and uh, stands out. So they've all, all this material is kiln dried to 10 to 12% uh, moisture content. Uh, you can see the class here that I've already discussed in the first place. Um, so that's kind of what we're getting into as far as the, the profiles. Um, another thing that some of our customers do is they take the either the five quarter by six uh, deck board and or the one by six and they mill it to a siding profile. That's totally up to you. It's not a part of that whole class A fire rating, but it's really versatile and different profiles that um, the lumberyard can have it milled to. Uh, most common is going to be the siding. Um, then I guess what we need to get into now is going to be the, the airflow and installation. So let's go ahead and talk about that. Okay, so before I get into, you know, the recommended airflow and gap from the, you know, the deck board to the ground, what I want to talk about, which is kind of common knowledge, is letting the boards acclimate. I know none of us are patient. I am definitely not patient, but if you really can uh, make sure the homeowner and the contractor knows about it, or you as the salesperson, if that's who's listening today, make sure the, make sure the end user knows or the person who's installing it to try to let the boards uh, the deck boards of the material acclimate for seven to ten days if at all possible even if it's in the garage i mean ideally you want it exposed to your climate and the air around you so if it's going to expand or contract uh, by some measure that it, it does that before you install it so i want to make sure i got that out of the way um, if you want to come up here and take a look at this real quick this is kind of what i'm going to go over and some stuff i've already gone over so what i'm going to talk about real quick is the the airflow that's right here, and that's really crucial. So if you look at this paper here, it talks about the minimum re minimum recommended clearance is 12 inches above the ground, basically 12 to 24 inches with a vapor barrier. So what that means is, you know, we know dirt holds in moisture. So really what you want to do is, if we get rain or any sort of moisture, rather than having that dirt trap in that moisture and it keep the bottom of the board wet, you want to install some sort of plastic moisture barrier with rock on top and have some sort of drainage. So if that's in a flat area, try to have a drain there, a drain in there so water can get out in some fashion. That's really important. Um, but really the key is, is airflow. So you wanna have a way for that uh, airflow to kind of get in and get out and escape, kind of push out any moisture that's sitting underneath there. Because even with the gap of the deck boards, you know, when you have a deck board that's, you know, quarter inch or 3 16 apart, that's still not enough to push out any of that moisture that's kind of hanging out underneath the board. So that's why that's really important. Um, the other crucial thing with this is your, your end seal. So all these you know cut samples I have here, I've actually put, I put this in wax on there. You're gonna have a, a brand that you carry. It really doesn't matter. The point is, is that it's a, it's a wax sealer. Um, and basically if you kind of peek in here, it's just gonna be that kind of white uh, filmy wax. When you apply it on there, it's gonna be clear just like this once it dries. You're not gonna know it's there. But that's really crucial. I mean, any any field cut or in cut must have that sealer on there, that that in wax, um, just as a um, a best practice, really for any hardwood. So you know, we kind of have that worked out. Um, the next thing we'll kind of discuss is sealer, not brand of sealer. That's up to you. Kind of do your own research on the application, a recommended application of whatever sealer or stain you purchase. But the big point to remember here is that if you're going to stain it, seal it, you need to do it all four sides. So the, the most common thing that gets brought up to me is, okay, well, Adam, how am I gonna stain the bottom of the deck? Well, I, I guess I understand that. So what you're gonna do is before the board is actually installed, have the contractor or homeowner flip the boards over, 
put that stainer sealer on the back and the sides. Obviously flip those things over, install it however that's going to be. Then when you're all done, you can, you can obviously finish, you know, clean the top of the deck and put your sealer on there. That's how you would do it. The next thing that gets brought up, how am I supposed to reseal the bottom when it comes down to my annual maintenance or every eight months, whatever it is. You don't need to reseal the bottom. It's going to be virtually impossible in most situations anyway. The key is that you're protected the first time on that bottom side because really the wear and tear is the top from us walking on it, from the sun, from the rain, so on and so forth. So if you're going to stain it, stain it all four sides. If you're not going to stain it, then that's fine. You don't need to. Just keep in mind any wood that you don't seal or treat is susceptible to water stains, uh, kind of surface checks, like light surface cracking. That's just from the board drying out. That's completely normal really for any hardwood. Um, so, you know, that will happen. Keeping a sealer or protectant on there will help minimize that when it comes down to it. Um, next thing we'll talk about is kind of the, the gapping between the boards. So, you know, when you're installing your deck boards, and this is pretty standard these days, the minimum gap is 3 16 on there. That's kind of what Mangaris wants, quarter inch. Um, usually is kind of what you're going to get with the clips if you're doing the five quarter groove material, but three sixteenths at a bare minimum if you can on that. Um, now I guess what we'll talk about is how to install the different profiles of the decking. So the most common deck board that's sold is going to be the one by six or you know net three quarter by five and a half. This the only recommended way to actually fasten this is by face screws, and that's going to be. A number 10 face screw so if you look at this it says it's a number 10 by two and a half inch stainless steel screw and the key on this is the head size so what you don't want to use well you probably want to use it but you should not use it so uh, most people want to use a trim head screw because it's less visible but really the key here is this big number 10 head and this is a brown stainless steel head that we carry uh, it's called head coat it's from our starborn brand that we carry at Boise and uh, Riverside here. Um, the key is the hold down. So with the, with the larger head here, if this board wants to move or twist up in any way, that head is going to help hold this board down. And that's really crucial, especially on a one by six board. So the only recommended way to fasten it is a number 10 stainless steel screw. Obviously, I want you to use our head coat brand, but the key is a number 10. So if you have something different on the shelf, that's fine. But number 10 stainless steel, uh, screw for your fastening and you can actually get in three quarters of an inch You don't have to go a full inch like some of the boards want three quarters of an inch in from the Butt end and the side is fine and then I should give you more hold down power on the side there No grooving or clips whatsoever on the one by six. If there's any issues uh, There's really going to be no help for you on it So face screw only when it comes to this three-quarter thickness board um, the next board that we'll talk about or boards is going to be our five quarter. So that's this right here. So you've uh, probably seen it in the square edge. That's the most common. And then we have our five quarter in a grooved profile here where you can use uh, these Tiger Claw TCG clips. And that is the only recommended clip by Mangaris for the installation on the five quarter. So as far as uh, face screwing, if someone wants to face screw it, we would really recommend the same method with these number 10 uh, stainless steel screws on both of these boards here. The other recommended way, which I forgot to bring up on this 1x6, is our Pro Plug system. This is definitely an acceptable way to face screw or install on the 1x6 board and the 5 quarter boards here. So, what that's going to be, this Pro Plug system here, you have your, your stainless steel screw, which in this case, this is a smaller head. Um, and I get questions, you know, okay, well, this is a smaller head. Why do I have to use a number 10 head on this one? Well, the, the reason why is when you're using this particular board here, you're using the pro plug tool by drilling down into the board and then it cuts for this plug. That's right here. So this happens to be our Red Bull Out plug. So with the screw itself and the dab of glue and you have this plug that's been hammered down in there, you have adequate hold down from all those layers built up. So that's why this is an acceptable option. So I'm gonna go ahead and test that out for you real quick so you can see actually how to use it. So let me get, okay, so I'm gonna get the, the Pro Plug bit out so I got a fresh bit 
to make my life easy. Put that in there. So this is this is basically how you're going to use the Pro Plug system. So basically, I'm going to drill down through there, and then once this stops, it's going to stop right here. Then I've gone the perfect depth to go ahead and uh, put the screw in and use the plug. So let's go ahead and do it. See how it stopped right there? So now I'm good. Okay. So now I'm gonna take that off. I'm gonna get a screw out of here, which obviously the screws come with it. Let's make sure I got the right bit. Yes, I do. Don't want that on too big of a load now. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put this in. So if you come and look, it's at that perfect depth. So what we'd wanna do the next step would be to take a dab of our glue. And then once again, this comes with a glue nozzle. I just don't have it with my home kit. And you just put a small dab of glue in there. I'm just not gonna do that in this case. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of the plugs, make sure the grain is going the same direction as this board here. I'm going to put it right there. I'll just take one of my samples and my hammer, put it over it, and that's in right there. And then I would just kind of lightly sand that, so you got the grain going the same direction, and this way you're not seeing kind of a a shiny stainless steel screw if that's what you're using you can just blend that in perfectly so that's 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 the method that would be acceptable for the three-quarter decking product the one by six and the five-quarter as far as a face screw application so obviously next would be as far as this groove board is concerned uh, we want to use clips so I've already kind of put a clip in on this side over here if you can see it I have a clip there so just kind of an idea of how it would work I'm gonna put a clip in on this side too so you can see it so we're going to take our clip, so this is our Tyra Claw TCG clip, which is right here. That's the only approved clip when using the five quarter groove product. So I'm going to take that right here, I'm going to hook it in, like so, push it down, and then I'll take my screw, so let me just change that bit out. And we're going to put that in. So then that's, that's in perfect right there. So then obviously if we were actually doing a deck project, this would then set in like so, and then we'd kind of move on from there. So that's, that's basically when it comes down to the fastening, those are the fastening options for the Mangaris decking product. Um, you, we've talked about the face screws uh, right here. Once again, on the face screw application, you do want to use a smart bit for your pre-drilling. In this case, it would be a number 10, not a number 8. That's just all I had at this time. And then when you're using the Pro Plug system right here, you do need the Pro Plug wood tool to drill down uh, to create the, the hole for the screw and obviously bore for the plug itself. Um, and that's basically going to be it as far as fastening. Um, as far as maintenance on this, you know, really that's up to the quality of the, the stainer sealer that you put down. When you do your reapplication, I really wouldn't be using a pressure washer at a high PSI. You'll end up making kind of grooves uh, and shapes in the wood. You really don't want to do that. Uh, so just take care when you're cleaning for that kind of stuff, when you're, when you're going to clean the, the deck boards. Um, and then really that's it. That's kind of, you know, that's the main gear spread product offering. You know, from the profiles to the decking to the fastening, we talked about the uh, 20 year warranty against any structural damage caused by termites, the Class A fire rating, uh, flame spread, we approval. Um, that's it. We thank you for being a Boise partner. I thank you for listening to this video. Once again, you know, always read the manufacturer installation recommendations before you install anything to make sure you're doing it per their instructions. Um, I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please email me at adamkenney at bc.com. That's Adam, K-E-N-N-E-Y at bc.com. And I'll try to answer any questions for you that way. Thanks again.